very strong opinion about the golden age of video games. It's probably generational, but for us, I'm I became a gamer in the Super Nintendo days. But really, Super Nintendo slash PS One is really the golden era yeah. of video games, as far as our interests are concerned. Truth. And so, there's a there's a there's a young you know young bucks out there who want to do the quote unquote retro gaming. And not really sure where to start or what to be into. And so I'm, we're not going to talk about all that. This is really focused on the JRPGs that came out in the States during that era. And so we're not going to get into all of them. But as far as PlayStation 1 is concerned, because that's what we're going to focus on, we're going to do our top five recommendations for JRPGs. Now, this is no specific order. There are many other games past this. But if somebody came to me and said, I need you to recommend the, you know, the five that I really should have, you know, must plays, then these are what they are. And then I'm going to give some and uh, Lee's going to give some. And so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of just like go back and forth. It doesn't have to be, you know, my turn, then your turn. Um, one, and I think this is kind of standard. It's going to sound kind of generic, but I, I think it's important. I have Final Fantasy VII. If, that if would it, definitely be on my list. Yeah, if you if you didn't play any RPGs from that era, Final Fantasy VII is a must. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I enjoyed the other ones too, but it's like if I had to choose one Final Fantasy, because I'm only going to put one on my top five, and it would be seven. You know yeah, I mean? like, I'm only going to put one Final Fantasy uh, as far as like the main Final Fantasies on there. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much standard. I think most people would agree with that. Um, so here's here's how we'll do it. Since we both got Final Fantasy out. I'll do the I'll do one and then you do one and we'll okay. go like that. All right. Yeah. So my next one is Xenogears. Yeah. I think uh, Xenogears had such an incredible story. Uh, very very few games have a story like that. Uh, the combat system was pretty good. I definitely liked the actual characters versus the gears. I thought the actual characters had a more interesting combat mechanic. Yeah. Um, but the story was ama- fucking absolutely fucking phenomenal. Yeah. And it's a long one, though. That's a meaty one. If somebody <laughs> ever listens to this and, like, I'm going to go run out and play Xenogears, um, you know, put, put away a couple weeks because that one's meaty. And it's, and it's tough. There are some real tough fights in there. Remember Ramses in Underwater? Jesus Christ, <laughs> that fucking battle, dude. Yeah. That battle was fucking brutal. Because that was the one that you rolled right into the next one. It was I, I forgot you like you fought somebody and rolled into his yeah and, you and fought it was just him and it yeah into and it's like else. and the, and the thing is it wasn't like I mean it was a crucial moment but it wasn't like that crucial where you're just like what the fuck why is this guy so <laughs> fucking hard man dude yeah this I is an loved, insanely hard battle I loved Rams's story though like in his conflict he was basically like a a nega fey you know what I mean like he was built to take Faye's place and then all of a sudden like he got discarded he was trash oh dude I, mean? I think. One of my most memorable moments in JRPG history of all time, and if this is a mild spoiler, so if you don't want any spoilers, it'd turn me off for like twenty seconds. Um, but when Satan uh, pulled Id at a Fey yeah. and he was interviewing him, and they yeah. had that music playing, I was like, "Dude, this is such a killer scene, dude! It was so good." Um, but yeah, if you never played Xeno Gears, that is definitely on the top. Top recommendation. All right, so uh, what you got for me? One of my favorites is Parasite Eve, man, because we dealt yeah. with, like, the fantasy-type setting a lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we had the swords and the shields and the magic and stuff like that. Final Fantasy had a little fun with, like, guns and stuff. Yeah, and, they like, did, the, They did like, the steampunk. The steampunk yeah, yeah, definitely. But, like, Parasite Eve was one of those ones that was, like, a modern-day setting in New York, and, like, you know, you could upgrade and mod your guns and stuff like that. Yeah, I think the only other RPG that, like, really dealt with that modern setting was the Persona series. Yeah. Like, in the early series, you know, like, Persona 1 and 2. I love the music in it, too, and just, like, the, the story and the concept of it. The only thing, the only problems I really had with it were, you know, they were trying to kind of coincide with the survival horror tropes, where they had like an attractive younger female lead yeah. and stuff like that, and there was kind of a survival horror vibe going to it. But, but they like, still, but they still had the RPG mechanics, yeah, which was actually really cool. R- and yeah. I'm talking about the first one, not the second one. Fucking, it had solid RPG mechanics and stuff like that. There was still secret stuff to find. You go through the Chrysler building and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely a rad game. Yeah. 
And so we'll go to our number three. Like I said, this is no particular order, just where we're at. Uh, number three for me is Vandal Hearts. Yeah. Um, I loved, I absolutely adore Vandal Hearts. It's such a cool fucking story. The ending was one of those endings where you're just like, what the fuck? It was a killer ending, yeah. mature story, mature theme. It was so sad to see, too, because I feel like the tactics games kind of got, like, a weird rap. You know what I mean? Like, there we had the main, Especially, we like, had the main JRPGs that everybody was all about, and then we had, like, Final Fantasy Tactics and Vandal Hearts and stuff. And, like, it was kind of like a... I don't know. It's a different footing, and people just didn't get on board. Like, you either liked it or you didn't. And not only that, but uh, especially because Final Fantasy Tactics was so good yeah. that, like, Vandal Hearts kind of fell under the radar because of it. And I think I feel like a lot of people really missed out on Vandal Hearts because I see a lot of lists, and there's a lot of good lists out there by people that, you know, I respect, and I... I look at their list and I'm like, you played those games, you're legit as fuck. Yeah. But it, Vandal Hearts is normally not on that list, yeah. and it doesn't de- it doesn't uh, devalue their list. But like, Vandal Hearts is just a real low key game. But man, if you can get through that game, and you know, and the thing, what's great about Vandal Hearts, especially in the, this day and age, is Vandal Hearts isn't a grind. You can't really go back and grind away levels. Like it's all story battles. Yeah. And so it's it's all story. There's side uh battles but that's that's like these special battles to try and get this secret class and they're fucking brutal and if if you ever if you like Final Fantasy Tactics likes game Vandal Hearts is an absolute must. Yeah. An amazing game. So what you got for your number 3? Chrono Cross. Oh, I fucking fuck yeah. loved Chrono Cross, fuck man. Yeah, dude. Chrono it was Cross. a weird level up system where they had the you only leveled up. You you could fight random enemies and get kind of stat boosts with your HP and stuff like that. But most of the actual level up took place when you fought bosses and you got another star. They yeah. had star levels. And, and they stuff had such like that. cool characters, you know, they had such a variety of characters yeah. and like I'm a big ways. collector in games and stuff, and I love that you could get characters by playing one way and you could go through that game and do an entirely different playthrough I know. and get other I, I had to do like New that. Game Plus because uh Chrono Trigger slash Final Fantasy Six is my favorite game of all time. I have to tie those. Uh it's just it's just my thing. Yeah. But um I found out that they had a character named Glenn. Yeah. And I didn't know that when I was first playing through because I didn't have a strategy guide. I just played that game Raw it's Dog. It's such a bizarre way to get Glenn too. You had to turn kid down. I know, and like, and, 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 and if and, it, and if you don't know that, you wouldn't turn her down just because of the context of what's going on. Like yeah. I'm like, this bitch is helping me out. I wouldn't turn her down. But I once I found out they had Glenn and yeah. you got X cut and I'm like, yeah. oh, it was like tapping into my Chrono Trigger fucking heart. Yeah. I was like. Fuck that. I got to play again. Still, I have to have Glenn. Yeah. Still I have to, to have this him. day, probably like one of my favorite all-time favorite soundtracks, man. I love the oh, violins yeah. and stuff Ab- like that. Absolutely. Like Chrono Cross was an amazing game. Definitely a must play. Yeah. And so then we're going to move on to number four. And so number four for me is also kind of odd. And we have a lot of Square Enix games on here, yeah. but it's because I, they were really just kings at yeah. this point in time. They were killing it with these games. Um, but number four for me is Saga Frontier. Uh, it's not the first one, but it's the first one we got in the States. Yeah. Fucking, it was one of the first games I ever played that was really kind of non-linear. Especially, you got to play with seven different characters, yeah. and they each kind of had their own story. And if you played with Blue, dude, that was completely like open world. They were like, hey, you got this brother, and he's evil. Go become a badass magician and fight him. See you later. Would you and say, that was it. Would you say that he's your boy? Blue? Blue? Yeah, Blue's my boy. You're my boy, Blue. My boy, Blue. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it, Saga Frontier was an awesome game. Lots of secret stuff, to, you know? And not only that, they didn't hold your hands and they didn't protect you. That Dude, was there was times was... where I would roll into, like, some bio lab and be like, oh, I'm killing enemies. Cool. And then I'd roll across some boss who would do, like, 40,000 damage on me. I'm like, uh, I have 120 HP. What yeah. the fuck, dude? I had a hard time with it just because, like, it fell so far outside, like, the normal things that I was getting in that, yeah. you know, that genre. Absolutely. So. That, one was an, that, that one was definitely an oddball for its time, but it was fucking an amazing game. And so you got a number four. Uh, I gotta go with fucking, uh, I'm gonna go with Vagrant Story on that one. Oh, I'm so glad you said that one. Yeah. I'm so glad, because Vagrant Story was such, not it only- It was I, underrated, and the yeah. thing is, is, like, the, a lot of the things I appreciate about that game are 
they again, like I said, I just talked about Saga Frontier falling so far outside those tropes that I had a hard time with it. But I just something about Vagrant Story that also fell outside normal tropes that I just got on board with, man. Not, and it was a mature, good story. And not only that, you could tell they used a lot of the team members that they had uh, for like Final Fantasy Tactics yeah. and stuff like that. A lot of the same artists and same writers. It had a good, uh, mature story. And when I what I mean my mature is like a doll wasn't it wasn't lighthearted it was a very dark story yeah it had really fleshed out characters I love that like they had a really complicated like weapon system like yeah. you could take off the shaft and like the head of like uh, you know, the weapons and stuff like that <laughs> you said shaft <laughs> yeah it was a really complicated weapon upgrade system and stuff like that and just I remember spending so much time underground in dungeons. That like when you stepped outside and in that town and saw the light and shit like that, like yeah. it hit you hard. Vagrant Story was a kick ass game. Yeah. Plus, I love that dark past that the fucking main character had. Like you unlocked abilities once you started to yeah. learn like what his past was and stuff. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. It's such a fucking cool game. All right, so we're going to number five. You guys, I mean, I, you're act, I guess you're actually getting ten games. You know, two for one deal tonight. You know. <laughs> but um, and so number five. And this one I'm kind of torn about because I want to recommend two, but I'm going to go ahead and just go with the better one just for the, the story, and it, it's Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. If you haven't played Final Fantasy Tactics, that, 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 you, that has to be on your list. Uh, the gameplay was so good. The job system was fucking killer. The story was amazing. Uh, a lot of extra stuff to do on it. Uh, it just... All around, just a fucking kick-ass game. Yeah. You can't go wrong playing Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. It was a little bit harsh because all the enemies leveled up with you, the random battles and stuff like that. So Yeah, I but if you that. grind it away, dude, it made all the story battles so much easier. Oh, but man. if you play it the right way, if you just like play through normally and grind a little bit, dude, there's some fucking really, really hard battles in that game. Yeah. That game can be fucking brutal if you don't... If It, it can be really easy if you grind away. But it can be really fucking brutal if you just kind of play it normally. Yeah. But either way, the story kicked ass. The story and the characters were all fleshed out. The dialogue was so well written. Yeah. All the like magic effects and summoners, the job classes were fucking That's badass. The thing is, that was like one of the that was like one of the first times they just like nailed home all the job classes. Like those are still the job classes we see to this day. Like yeah. they nailed all and the Final Fantasy out, fourteen. I guaranteed almost all those job classes come from tactics. Yeah. All of them, you know what I mean? And they even had fucking Cloud in there. Yeah. They had Cloud. <laughs> With I'm, this ridiculous cherry blossom move that you could never get off. Cause the dude, I told you one moving. time I tried to pull off that move, it took me 38 turns. Jesus, I, I I ran away from enemies just because I wanted to see it. Because I'm like, dude, I could end this <laughs> battle 20 minutes ago, but I just want to see this fucking move. And, it, and honestly, it wasn't even really worth it. Yeah. Honestly, when you really look at it, Cloud's not even worth it, but... Nah. It was just it was cool. You get him at level one, and and you get him late in the game. It's like, dude, it's like I'm like level sixty right Uh, now, dude. I gotta like grow. I gotta grow this guy. That fucking brave and faith fucking level system was brutal too. When you're going through those like secret dungeons, you can get certain items based off of like how faithful your character was. Yeah, yeah, it was brutal. And so then you got you got one last one for us. Uh. It's a hard choice. I'm not. I'm kind of torn between a few. Well, uh, just yeah. If if you had to choose one, if it was like you absolutely have to play this RPG, what's your what's your final final verdict? Because I mean, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of amazing games we don't have on this list. Like what? Shit, we don't have Wild Arms on this list. Yeah, we don't have Star Ocean: The Second Story on this list right now. Uh, I mean, PlayStation One, dude. Uh, we don't have any of the Personas on this list. Oh uh, yeah, that's, that's that would probably be it. Persona two, the fucking Persona, Persona 2? two. That yeah. would be that would be your your final one. Yeah, I would I would like to go with uh, something like um, you know, uh, Legend of Dra- Dragoon or something like that. But uh, as far as like something new and explorative, like Persona two was. Is that Alundra? Amazing. We don't have Alundra on this list. Yeah, yeah, but so yeah, Persona two definitely, especially because the personas at that time were so out of left field. Nobody yeah. they were everybody was doing like fantasy stuff and Persona was doing like 
you know, modern people dealing with these personas with cards really and like, dark, and they too, were man. really like, dark, like deal with a lot of demons and yeah, shit like how that. You got your personas and stuff is you had to like fucking commit suicide. Yeah. And crazy yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. Like, like that was, Atlas was always really good about like making strange games though. Yeah. Um, but that's our two for one top five list. Like I said, they're not top five in any particular order. It's just, if we had to give you five from each of our opinions, that was it. So if you're listening to this video and you you know, you really want to play some of these games, definitely start with those. You will not you can't go wrong. None of those are real like, you know, niche games. I mean, they're they're all amazing games and I wish they made more games like that today, but they don't. The JRPG genre is kind of real it's really niche now. Yeah. You know. Anyways, like, subscribe, don't like, it's all good with us. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.